Guess what? John's here again. Scripture this morning from John 15, 1 through 8. <clears throat> I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more be fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches of, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do, no, do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here in the reading of God's holy word. So it is a joy to be with you all again this week. I'm grateful to Pastor Dave uh, for covering the pulpit for me last week, and I hope that you all enjoyed getting to spend some time with him again. This week we will begin a series on how we worship. Now it might seem like a, a strange question or one that can be answered in one sentence, right? How do we worship? Well, pastor, that's an easy one. We come to church. Yes, yes, you would be correct. We do come to church in order to worship. At least that is what we should be doing with our time while we are here. But if the only time you are worshiping God is when you come into this place, then brothers and sisters, you are missing out. There are 168 hours in a week. If you spend just one hour per week praising God, then you are praising him at less than 1% of your time for the week. Now, most of you know that I am uh, not great at math. It is not my strong suit. But even I can tell you that less than 1% of something is pretty small. So the question becomes, how is it that we can spend more time worshiping God? Is the answer to make sure that the church is open more? Well, yes, that could be one thing that we could do. But the real truth is that we need to find ways to worship God in our lives outside of this place. If we want to make sure that we are producing fruit for the Lord, then it cannot be that we are only allowing ourselves to worship him during this short hour on Sundays. Maybe it feels like a short hour on Sundays. I'm sure some Sundays it feels much longer than an hour to you. Now there is a theory that was put forth by an author named uh, Malcolm Gladwell. He, put, he wrote a book several years ago, ago called Outliers. And in this book he stated that he believes it takes someone over 10,000 hours of focused practice in order to master a task. 
And if that sounds like a lot of time practicing, well, yeah, it is. 10,000 hours is a lot of time. It would equate to about 417 days. Now, you could master that task in 417 days if you never stopped practicing. Obviously, you have to factor in that you will need to sleep and eat and occasionally do other things than just practice. So you can see that it does take a great amount of time to master something. So let us think of that in terms of our worship. If it would take us 10,000 hours of worship in order to gain a level of maturity where we are bearing fruit for the Lord, and we chose to only worship one hour a week, then we would need a little over a year to begin reaching a level where we are bearing fruit for the Lord. When you stretch that out over a lifetime, sure, a little over a year doesn't seem like a long time. But then you must consider this. Are we in worship every Sunday? Even I am not in worship every Sunday, right? Are we focused on worshiping God when we are here? Meaning, for that whole hour when you are here, is your mind and heart only focused upon God? You know, recently I had a conversation with someone and they asked me, Pastor, when you look out from the pulpit and you see the people in the pews, do you notice what we are all doing while you're giving your sermon? And I told them, yes, most of the time I can see who is doing what. I know when someone is focused elsewhere. I can tell usually when someone is daydreaming or spending the entire sermon looking out the window. I can tell when someone is focused on their phone. And yes, I can tell when I have put someone to sleep. And by the way, that is how I usually gauge if it's time for me to stop talking. If I put more than one person to sleep, it's probably time to wrap it up for the week. Now, I don't tell you that I see those things to shame you. That is not what I'm trying to say here. I know that there is much going on in your lives. And I am under no false impression that I am some great orator and have the ability to command your attention at all times when I'm speaking. If I'm being honest with you all, I have my days when I am sitting up front here and I struggle to focus as well. But I am telling you that I see this because if we are giving ourselves credit for a full hour of worship each time we are at church, well, if we are honest, the, the number would have to be lower for us all, right? And if we're trying to reach a point where we are bearing fruit for the Lord, again, we must be doing more than just relying on our time here each week. Now, that doesn't mean that our time together in corporate worship with one another isn't important. It is vitally important for our growth and our maturity. It is just that that is not enough. Which brings us to our scripture for today. We are told by Jesus that he is the vine and the Father is the vine grower. We are giving some great illustrations about what we need to do in order to make sure we are growing fruit for the Lord. And we are given warnings about what happens when we are not abiding in Christ and what, when we are not producing fruit for the Lord. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be growing fruit for the Lord? It doesn't, does it mean that we should all go out and plant a vineyard and, and grow grapes? No, that's not what, God, not what Jesus is trying to get at here. Uh, growing fruit for the Lord is the result of what we do in the name of Christ. It is for us to reach a point in our maturity as Christians that we are living in fellowship and worship with him on a daily basis, abiding in him in all things. Now, if we want to make sure that we are maturing in the way that we worship, there are two factors that we have to focus upon. The first we've already touched upon, and that is time. The time we spend in worship of God. And worship can be done anywhere and at any time. You know, as I was on my vacation this past week, I got a chance to worship God in one of my favorite places, and that is sitting beside the creek fishing. 
I was able to simply take some time and thank him for the splendor of the world he has provided. I was able to thank him for allowing me to catch a few fish, to thank him for the beautiful day he had provided, to continually pray that the Palomino that was sitting underneath this tree would finally take the bait that I was throwing at him as I tried everything that I had in my tackle box to no avail, but continued to pray that maybe that one special fish would decide now was the time. Now, as someone that might be walking by would have seen me, you know, it might just look like a guy sitting there, just a guy sitting there fishing. You know, to those outside of my heart and my mind, that is what they would see. But for me, it, it was a chance to be connected with God and worship him. The thoughts and the prayers that I was able to focus upon in that quiet time by the creek were wonderful for me and indeed helped me grow in my maturity in Christ. Now, I know that going out and fishing is not the answer for all of you to find time to worship God. But I know that there is something in your life that you enjoy doing that can be an act of worship for you. Perhaps it's during the time you are cooking. Maybe you can offer your prayers and meditations while you sew. Maybe it is the time that you spend listening to the laughter of your children or grandchildren. Perhaps it's the time when you're out planting crops. You see, all those times are appropriate for worship. Now, if the first thing we must focus on when worshiping is the time spent in worship, the second thing we must be aware of is the quality of how we worship to help us mature so that we are able to produce fruit for the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. We talked about how we need to be putting in the time, but if we are putting in the time in a way that is less than our best, it will take us longer to bear fruit. As you know, I spend a, I have spent a lot of my time uh, in my life playing and coaching sports, and I cannot begin to tell you the number of players that I have had that just blew off practice as a joke. They would come to practice, give the bare minimum amount of effort to get through the drills that they needed to do, and then they would go home. And interestingly enough, they were always surprised when it came game time and they would make a mistake, like miss a ground ball or an easy throw, because when we had practiced it, they had given no effort. Well, as you can all guess, they never put in the time and the hard work when preparing. And the result is that when the time came to perform, they just didn't have the ability well, I think we can be like that too sometimes as well. We can allow ourselves to go through the motions in how we are trying to mature and how we are worshiping God. And when the time comes for us to produce fruit for the Lord, we wonder why we are unable to do so. And we wonder why the results are not what we expected. Say you meet someone on the street and they simply ask you, why do you believe in Jesus? And the only answer that you can muster for them is, because I do. Now, it's not a bad answer, and it might be the true answer for you. But you must consider, how have you helped that person come to Christ with that answer? How have you produced fruit for the Lord in that situation? You see, it takes time and it takes effort to mature in your relationship with Jesus. It is not something that happens haphazardly. So let us make sure that we are taking the necessary time and putting forth the necessary effort to grow in how we worship God so that we might be producing the right fruit for him. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one way you can worship God this week outside of these walls? Do it this week. Amen.